Hi guys, my name is Doug. I'm a member of the technical service group here at Task Force Tips. And in this service video, I'm going to show you how to replace the exit elevation clutch on a Blitzfire monitor. Um, if, you, if you notice that you lift your nozzle and uh, it, just, it doesn't hold its position, just kind of falls back down, that's an indicator that of one of two things. The clutch either needs to be adjusted or the clutch needs to be replaced in its entirety. Uh, to adjust it, just a three-quarter inch wrench on the nut there and just tighten that in small increments until it holds its position, if it holds its position. If it does not, then at that point it's time to replace it and we'll show you that uh, in the upcoming video here. On the next screen, we're going to show you all the tools required to do that and uh, once you gather those up, we'll meet back here. Okay, we're back at the workbench. This is the unit we're gonna be working on. Uh, you'll notice it's got one elevation clutch. Now I do wanna show you, uh, some users may have what's called a high elevation blitz fire, an HE blitz fire. These units have two clutches as there's two segmented balls. Uh, the process is exactly the same. The only difference is you may be replacing one or both um, depending on your needs. We'll set this aside. Okay, so to begin, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the uh, adjusting nut. There is no Loctite on here, it's just tensioned by a uh, spring washer. Three quarter inch wrench will remove that, set that aside. The next thing, using a 532nd Allen wrench, we're going to remove the, uh, the screw that holds the entire clutch mechanism to the casting. That does have blue Loctite on it, there will be a little resistance but can be removed by hand. Now just a little tip, as you're removing this, as you're loosening that screw, just pull the entire housing and the guts with it as you take it off. That brings everything off together as one assembly. Set those aside. The, the kit comes with all new pieces uh, for the unit. If there's any parts left behind, such as this, uh, this fiberglass washer, go ahead and remove that. Again, the kit has new pieces. It's always good to clean up the work area before you install the new. The first thing you want to do is put one of those fiberglass washers in place. That separates the, the clutch tumbler from the, the, the metal face there. When we send out the kits, they come zip tied together here as an assembly so that you're not having to assemble the entire kit before putting it onto the unit. These are just an easy break sort of zip tie. Break that, making sure to hold everything together. Now what you want to do before you put that on, you want to put a small dab of blue Loctite on that thread. We include a small vial of it in the kit. I'm just going to use one of our assembly bottles for the purpose of the video. Small dab of Loctite on there. Line that up and don't just push the, the housing on. Um, that can misalign parts internally. Just push it on until the screw just seats against the casting and then move the clutch housing on as you tighten the screw. That will keep everything internally aligned. Don't make it tight just yet. Let it sit just a little bit loose. Well, that'll give us some free movement to line parts up as we put other pieces in there. The next thing you're going to put on is another um, fiberglass washer. Using your Allen wrench, just kind of tuck that in, or your hex key, just kind of tuck that in back around the dirt seal. You'll see the white dirt seal in there. Next is what we call a D washer, for obvious reasons. Looks like there's a D cut out in it. And you'll notice that matches the flat on the, uh, the threaded shaft here. Slide that over. Again, using the, the hex key, just kind of push that in and line it up. That's where that free movement helps us get that in there. The last piece to go in will be this Belleville washer. You notice it's concave on one side. That concave is going to go against the D washer, so make sure you get that in the right direction. That provides some spring resistance against the clutch as we tighten this uh, nut. The last part is this three-quarter inch nut. No Loctite gets applied to this. Just put that on finger tight right at the moment. 
Make sure everything is aligned here nice. Make sure the clutch housing is aligned well with the backer plate. And then go ahead and snug up that screw that holds everything into place. Okay. So now lastly, what we have to do is we have to adjust the tension on the clutch. The recommendation is not to find the heaviest nozzle you can possibly find, but the heaviest nozzle that you will typically be using on the, on the Blitzfire monitor. Thread that into place. And we want to adjust it so that this will hold its position without having to be assisted. Using the three quarter inch wrench, just go ahead and snug that up a little bit and we're going to continually check. You should hear that little bit of clicking. That's the clutch activating as we raise it. So you want to get that so it kind of holds its spot well. Make small incremental adjustments, a sixteenth to an eighth of a turn at a time. And you want that so it holds its position no matter where you are, and then that's fine. The spring tension from the screw or from that Belleville washer will hold that nut in place. Now we're not using a um, torque wrench today, but should you make adjustments to these in the field, do not exceed 200 inch-pounds of torque. Um, over torquing that clutch can cause undue or uh, uh, premature wear on the clutch pulls that would cause this to wear out tip quicker than would typically be expected. Uh, that completes the repair of the clutch mechanism on a blitz fire. If after having reviewed this service video you find you have additional questions or concerns, certainly feel free to reach out to us. You can find all of our contact information at tft.com or you can also reach us at 800-348-2686 and ask for the technical service group.